Okay, good morning everyone. Today my topic is bi-level optimization and data analysis for efficient tuning of high energy physics event generators. So for high energy physicists, they, wanna enter, uh, they want to answer some fundamental questions like what is this universe, um, what's the nature of the universe, and what is it made of? So the high energy physicists use some um, particle accelerators to recreate the conditions just after the Big Bang. So the Large Hadron Collider is one of the particle accelerators that they use. So LHC, the la uh, Large Hadr uh, Hadron co uh, Collider, is the world's largest and highest en energy um, particle accelerator. And so it, it will just beam, um, um, collide two beams head on uh, and, they're very, um, and they're very high energies. And then the international um, uh, co uh, co co collaboration of physicists will just analyze the particles created during these collisions using some special detectors. So among them, um, Atlas is, is one of the, um, the detectors. So the picture here on the left side shows the Atlas experiments. But since running so, uh, such a experiments is very expensive, uh, physicists are using simulations to, um, to help find the interesting uh, physics uh, ph phenomena and also to verify if the models that they, they derive from their understanding agree with those experiments. <coughs> and in this process, the physicists want to tune the parameters to find a good parameter setting so that it can explain most of the observations during the expensive ALAS experiments. And here, we're, um, we're just trying to help them. We're motivated to help them find such a good parameter setting as well as to auto-select the uh, tune, uh, tuning relevant observations. So let me explain some of the terms uh, involved. Um, the atomic um, object of interest we're interested, uh, we're interested in is called the bins, and we use the um, sub, uh, subscript B to denote the bin. And the logical groupings of the bins is called a histogram, and the histogram is basically uh, a representation of the observables, and we just denote the observable as um, big O. Here, so here in the picture, we can see that the, um, this picture is the histogram that is the representation of an observable with many bins. And so the atlas data actually give us some um, measurement data with the um, measurement data value as well as the uncertainty associated with this value. And um, that we can just denote that using the RB and delta, uh, delta RB. And this, va this value are in, um, in in, um, shown in this picture by the, 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 um, the black line on the upper plot, in the upper plot. And so the physicists use the Monte Carlo event generator simulations to describe those experiment data, and these are denoted by the simulation data shown in the red line. If you use the oh. mouse, then you okay. can point. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. So the physicists use the red line to describe the uh, measurement data. So here uh, on the bottom, on the bottom pl uh, plot, you can see the, um, the red line shows the value of the Monte Carlo simulation data over the experimental data. So if the, the red line is closer to the reference line, that is the horizontal line uh, with the value one, then that means our simulation, um, simulation is, uh, uh, is in agreement with the, um, the experimental data. So the physicists want to tune their parameters in their high energy physics event generators. And we use the MCP to denote these simu um, uh, simulations. So now the physicists just, uh, just need to, um, to tune the parameters, run the simulation, and uh, see if their um, the simulation is in agreement with the data. But the thing is, like, for just one simple, simple simulation, it can cost thousands of hours to run. So instead of using these costly simulations, we want to use some cheap, um, cheap functions to approximate this simulation data. So here we use the polynomial approximation, and we denote that with the FB uh, for, for P. And now the question is more clear. Basically, we just need to find the best parameters that can minimize the chi-square values, which, is, uh, which measures the difference between our approximation and the, um, the experimental data. However, the physicists are also involved in the, um, a subjective reweighting of the individual contributions of the to the optimization problem, uh, where they need to look at a thousands of these type of histograms to see which, which observable is more important and which one is not. 
And then this, this process um, takes, a, take, take a lot of time. And also the uh, 1,000 physicists might have 1,000 different opinions about which, which observable is more important. So we want to help the physicists um, to set them out from this uh, situation. So we want to automate the weight assignment for each of the observables. So we address this problem through a bi-level bi optimization formulation where we have two um, two optimization um, levels and the outer optimization is trying to find the best uh, ways for each of the observable and the lower, the, that is the inner optimization is trying to find the best parameter setting. And here let me remind you, so for the weights actually it shows the importance of, of one observable and it lies between zero and one and if the value of the weights is high that means this, uh, this observable is more important. And for the parameters, um, those are the the things that, uh, that the physicists want to tune. And um, this, the table shows an example of the um, parameters that the physicists want to tune in one data set and um, example values. You can just imagine that when there are thousands of parameters in the parameter space, um, the, the physicists, uh, this is a very ch um, challenging problem for the physicists to, to tune. So our formulation will be just like we have an outer optimization um, with the obje objective function being g, and we have the constraint that the summation of the weights um, equals one, and we have the inner optimization to find the best prim parameter values, and here we are just trying to minimize the chi-square values de defined by this. Our contribution is basically to the outer objective function, and we, we proposed three different ways for um, f formulating the outer objective function, which is the uh, scoring method, um, including the me median score or mass, uh, uh, mean score, and the other method is called the portfolio score, uh, portfolio method. So for scoring method, um, uh, we are mo motivated to measure the performance of predictive model, and this, this method is, is inspired by uh, the work um, published in 2007 by Gennating and Raftery, where they are trying to measure the performance of, um, of the goodness of fitting for a predicted model. So basically, just for, uh, for each of the observable, we just calculate the, uh, the median or the, the mean um, score. And then the outer objective will just be to uh, minimize the total score across all of the observables. For the portfolio method, this method is actually inspired by a concept in the financial engineering where they are trying to um, maximize the, the expected return while minimizing the, the, the risk. So here we're just trying to minimize the expected error over all the observables while also minimizing the variance of the errors. So in summary, the formulation of our outer objective function is um, they're listed here. So the first one, basically, we're trying to minimize the uh, the uh, the um, the total median score, and the second one is trying. Uh, we're trying to minimize the total mean score, and third one is uh, we're we're minimizing the portfolio method, uh, which is the uh, the mean plus the uh, lambda times uh, sigma square, and the uh, definition of them uh, are listed on the right side. And here, the parameter lambda controls how much variance we want to include in our, uh, in our uh, objective function. And if the lambda value is small, then that means um, minimizing over the mean error is more important in our objective function. And uh, this plot shows the results of our parameter tuning. And so the x-axis shows the error level, and the y-axis shows the number of observ observations that uh, with the chi-square values smaller than a certain um, error level. And so for this plot, basically, we can see that um, the higher the, the value it is, the better the method it is. So uh, we compare our three methods uh, with the Monash tune, that is the um, the tuning given by the physicists that they, they just tune this by hand. We can see that all of our, of our th three proposed methods perform better than the uh, hand tune, the Monash tune. And is this good enough? Actually, um, in this, this tuning process, there, there are some observables that shouldn't be included in the optimization in the first place. And so we propose to use the data analysis to filter out the observables that are not important based on the criteria that, um, of, of calc um, calculating the chi-square values. And our preliminary results confirm our assumption that by excluding out um, the, the bad observables, uh, 
our, our fitting will be much better. So now the question is how to find the outliers. So there are a lot of methods uh, in the um, statistic tools to help us find outliers. And one of the most straightforward ways to look at the scatter plot. And there are other ways like uh, z-score, basically just uh, trying to calculate the, uh, the, the, uh, the value of the observation minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. If it's th um, more than three, then that is an outlier. If not, it's not outlier. And uh, other ways uh, listed here, so our um, outlier detection method reported some of the outliers to us and shown on the, on the right side, on the uh, circle here. And we confirmed that with the physicists that the outliers we detected are actually the outliers that the, the ones we want to exclude from our e optimization. So this plot shows that the outlier screening helped to find a better parameter tuning result compared to the default uh, hand tuning, um, that, that is the Monash tuning. And here we can see that the closer, um, the closer to the data, the better the performance it is. And we can see that by using the outlier screening method, our results is more in line, um, um, more closer to the reference line, that is the, uh, the horizontal line with the value one. In con conclusion, our, met our proposed method Bi-level optimization helps the way, um, ha makes the way adju adjustment automated and also less subjective, and the parameter tuning results are also better. By using the pre-processing um, pre of the data analysis, uh, filter out, fi filtering out the observables, um, the observables that, that should be filtered out uh, makes sense to the physicist, and by doing this, um, we not only save the time, uh, but also we, we make the fi uh, physicist um, no, no, um, no need to do the vi visual inspections anymore. And we have the metric to compare the uh, different tunes and it shows that our tune is way better than the Monash tune, that is the physicist tuning. And in the future, we will, um, we will uh, explore more about the filtering method and see which one is more recommended by the uh, physicist's opinions. And um, that's it, thank you. So uh, the physicists, because the fitting, uh, some some of the fittings are super bad. The physicists just uh, just f figure out that this will influence the parameter setting in the end, and then um, so s some of the observables sh should be like uh, should should have a l way lower weight so that it will not influence the parameter setting that much. Maybe I'm Yes. Uh, just in the conclusion, you talked about a metric to, to more easily compare different results. Yes, uh, so and this uh, is shown. Sorry. Yeah, so here shows the, the metric. Uh, here it shows the metric. Okay, because on the fine, on the previous slide, just before the conclusion, you, you're still comparing two curves. Uh, yeah, so that one, um, it, it's just. Um, so this one is the, the histograms. We just show this um, in a like a for a better um, comparison. We can see that compared with the reference line, if it's closer to this reference line, then that means this tuning is better. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a metric that you have? I don't know. Maybe one one number that would summarize the fact of being close to that line. Uh, yeah. We can basically plot the same thing like the one you seen earlier. Like this, yeah. yeah. We we have similar results. Basically, still the out screen um, using the outlier screening, our results will be better than the Monash tuning. Thank you. Who are you working with in the physics community? Uh, Sven, uh, from the um, Argon lab, and also uh, in Berkeley lab uh, with Zach and Xiangyang. Yeah, and Fermi Labs. <laughs> how close are you to actually getting them to use the techniques for their purposes? Um, 
Um, so we talked to Zach, Zach Marshall, he's like a Chevrolet fellow here, um, and he said that in the next six months they're going to implement a new tune for updates that's supposed to replace the 814 tune, and he said that it's open, like they will consider everybody's barometer suggestions. So my uh, agenda is to put some barometers out there for <laughs> consideration. Yes. How do those how do the physicists take your this automated process of hand tuning or parameter tuning versus their hand tuning? Do they take it like there is no uh, domain knowledge involved in this, while the monash is a some kind of domain knowledge? In this world. How do they take this method? Do uh, they take it individually or do they take it as? So the monash tuning actually is the best tuning that the physicists have right now. And of course, we might have like uh, optimal tuning um, in our optimization, but that might not be achieved um, for all, for all the observables. I mean, for each ob observable, we might have a, like we, we have the best tuning for itself, but for the overall for all the observables, we, we kind of need to balance out um, balance uh, which one we want to put more emphasis to. So in the end, um, so the the ideal um, parameter might not be achievable. And this is why we have the um, by law of optimization to find a, find a good parameters that can explain most of the observables. So they take it favorably. Do the physicists take it favorably that this method is good, or yes. they still are skeptic about this thing? Okay. But after you get the results out of this, we'll still look at what the results are and then decide if it's right or wrong. Um, I think the physicists are. They agree with our results and they think this is a good team. Maybe to be mentioned, it depends on how old the physicists are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, in my experience, the younger phones are more open to new methodologies to do something more efficient and it's like based on computing instead of eyeballing all 400 histograms. <laughs> the older ones are a little bit more set in their ways, so that's a little bit more convincing. <laughs> But I think these results that Jean has there, they are, they are really good because especially the metric that she's showing that shows you an objective way to compare different approaches. And you can see the Monage is the blue one that's basically the original one. Your, your thing wants to be as left up in the corner as possible and anything that you've done is better than what they currently have. If we can actually show that on the real simulation and it still will do that better than Thank you.